after learning what communication is all about and the principles, processes, including the ethics on communication. So this time, let's find out communication and globalization. Connecting with people on the other side of the world is now much easier than it was a few years ago. Satellites, fiber optic cables, and the internet make it effortless to share information with those in different time zones and locations. Global communication is directly affected by the process of globalization and helps to increase business opportunities, remove cultural barriers, and develop a global village. So that's the essence of global communication or communication in globalization. Both globalization and global communication have changed the environmental, cultural, political, and economic elements of the world. Many companies today hire employees that are located in other countries using communication vehicles such as video calling, make it simple to converse with colleagues across the globe, almost making it feel as if they are in the same room, just like what we are doing. Um, we're having an online class, so it feels like we're still having like a face-to-face, -face, a traditional one, okay, in this time of pandemic. So that's the essence of this technology. Technology also makes it easier to connect with suppliers and customers all over the world and to streamline those relationships through improves ordering, shipment, tracking, and so on. So with this kind of communication technology, many businesses are able to take advantage of opportunities in different countries or cities, improving the economic outlook on the global level. Okay. So with this time of pandemic, right, in our community, in our country as well, uh, we no longer have to go to um, stores or food chains just to have our favorite food, right? So we can just use um, different apps or applications and then we can order um, as fast as we can. Let's have this one, the creation of a global village. Let's talk about the social media. The term global, global village was coined by Canadian communication scholar, that's Marshall McLuhan. Um, accordingly, it is affected both by globalization and global communication. The global village is created when distance and isolation no longer matter because people are connected by technology. So that's the concept of the global village according to Marshall McLuhan. The widespread telephone, internet access have been life-changing for many people across the world, especially those in developing countries. Many are now enrolling in universities across the world without having to leave their desk chair. Okay. In the Philippines, the information technology, business processing, outsourcing, or IT BPO is one of the fastest growing sectors. The IT industry includes call centers, knowledge of process outsourcing and back offices, animation, game development, software development, engineering design, as well as medical transcription. Globalization and global communication have made it easier to see people on the other side of the world as a neighbor, neighbor instead of stranger from far away land. There's so much knowledge about other countries and cultures available online. All right, so let's have this one, concepts on the social media usage so there are here terms that we need to know you have there the word identity sharing presence relationships 
conversations, groups, and reputation. Let's start with sharing. So when you talk about sharing, this refers to the extent to which users exchange, distribute, and receive information. Presence refers to the extent to which users know if others are available. Then relationships refers to the extent to which users relate to each other. And identity refers to the extent to which users reveal themselves, whereas conversations refers to the extent to which users communicate with each other. So those are the different um, definition of terms. Other terms like reputation and groups. Reputation refers to the extent to which users know the social standing of others and the content, while groups refers to the extent to which users are ordered or form communities. Communicating in a multicultural society and the world, right? So our world is no longer in the process of becoming a global, global village. We are linked to people in all corners of planet Earth because of increase of multiculturalism Diversity education is occurring on more and more college and university campuses. The practice has its critics and its supporters. Whatever our personal beliefs are, what we can all acknowledge is that communication is at all at the heart of both disputes over effects of globalization and conflicts over the importance of diversity education. The culturally confused pay a high price. In fact, cultural misunderstandings often lead to lost opportunities and increased levels of tension between people. In contrast, recognizing and responding to different differences among cultures can allow for more meaning, meaningful relationships. And as a result of learning about such differences, you should be better able to appropriately respond to a varied commun communication styles. Recognize the need to expand your choices as a communicator and increase the effectiveness of your interactions with persons of different cultures. Okay, so that's how we indulge people with different cultures. In the age of increased global contact, we need to learn how to communicate effectively with persons culturally different from ourselves, persons with whom we should still be able to freely share ideas, information, and feelings to become even more interculturally aware and competent. Culture consists of a system of knowledge, beliefs, values, customs, behavior, and artifacts that are acquired, shared, and used by members during daily living. So that is one definition of culture. Within a culture as a whole, there are so what you call co-cultures or subcultures. These are composed of members of the same general culture who differ in some ethnic or sociological way from the parent culture. Persons who feel like outsider have a number of options to choose from regarding how they want to interact with members of the dominant group culture or even if they want to interact with them at all. The intercultural communication imperative reduces the strangeness of strangers. So how are we going to do this? We need to open ourselves to differences by adding to our storehouse of knowledge, by learning to cope with uncertainty, and by developing an appreciation of how increasing our cultural sensitivity will positively affect our communication competence. So that's how we do that. Then exploring cultural differences. There are three variables used to distinguish cultures. First, individualism versus collectivism. Um, in individualistic cultures, cult cultivate individuals, initiative, and achievement, while collectiv collectivistic cultures tend to nurture group influences. 
while in collectivistic cultures, the individual is expected to fit into the group. So you need to be open-minded and then more positive. And then similar, like um, we need to be a team player. In high context versus low context communication, high contrast communication is a tradition bound communication system which depends on indirectness. Low contact communication is a system that encourages directness in communications. So that's how the two differs from each other. Then high power distance versus low power distance power. Um, uh, power distances measures to the extent which individuals are willing to accept power differences. High power distance cultures based on power differences in which sub, uh, subordinates differ to superiors. Right? So we need to understand and uh, accept each other's differences. In contrast with this, um, low power distance cultures believe that power should be used when legitimate. Then masculine versus feminine cultures um, differ in their attitude about gender roles. In highly masculine culture, members value aggressiveness, strength, and material symbols of success. In highly feminine culture, members value relationships, tenderness, and members of both success and high quality of life. Okay. So we need to understand so that uh, uh, we will not be misunderstood and we, will sh we should not also uh, misunderstood them. When persons from diverse power distance culture interact, unless these differences in orientation are acknowledged, interaction may, may well result in misunderstandings, right? So to the extent that we are able to use our understanding of another culture to reduce the number of misunderstanding between us, we do not interpret the behavior of others based on our own frames of references. We take further steps toward reducing the strangeness of strangers. So that's actually one um, good thing that we need to do. To avoid misunderstanding. The internet permeates national boundaries and erodes the now aging connection between location and experience. Technology, computer networks are changing the traditional definition of community. We can use it to compare experiences, find others who share similar interests and concerns, and elicit information and advice from experts in various countries. But we need also to face in fact that some cultures and religions, technology is considered evil. Some people asserting that technology was making their lives too complicated. So perhaps they prefer on the traditional ways. Having the desire to relate more effectively with persons of different culture is critical to improving your ability to communicate interculturally. Also important is exploring the stereotypes you have about people from other countries. When there are pointers here that we need to ponder, refrain from formulating expectation based on society of your own culture. When those you interact with have diverse communication styles, it is critical that you acknowledge differences and accept their validity. Recognize how faulty education can impede understanding. It is important to identify and work to eliminate any personal biases and prejudice you have developed over the years. So before is different than now. Okay, so let us not compare the past to present. Then Included here, the additional reading is also found in your um, course study guide, The Impact of Globalization of Communication and Education by Blake Baxter. And then there is also one question here that we need to ponder and then to cultivate our mind on the 
communication and globalization based from the article above what does communication and globalization and education mean to you as a student and how can schools rise to the challenge of internationalization so what do you think so this could be a challenging question in our part and that's all thank you very much for your participation and then i'll see you all thank you